Hi, Gordon the Gamekeeper here again. In this conservation fact file we will be looking at the grey partridge, whose Latin name is Perdix Perdix. I will be talking with Peter and Moira Perdix, the grey partridge pair from Norfolk. But first, let's learn a little more about the grey partridge itself. The grey partridge is a medium-sized bird, brown-backed with a distinctive orange face. The belly is white and usually marked with a large chestnut brown horseshoe mark in males. Size-wise, they are up to 33 centimeters in length, with a wingspan of up to 56 centimeters and weigh up to 500 grams. So now we have a picture of our bird of interest, let's talk with Peter and Moira Perdix. So Peter, where do you guys come from? Our brothers and sisters can be found across Europe, Asia and North America. We actually evolved in the temperate, insect-rich grasslands of the Asian steppes. In the United Kingdom we make our homes in lowland arable areas, living in groups of 6 to 15, called a covey. In the spring breeding time, the covey splits up into pairs, who rear their young, and form new coveys, until the following year. The grey partridge female is a fantastic caring mother, who is very attentive to her brood, constantly, quietly, calling the chicks to keep them close. They probably lay more eggs than any other ground nesting bird, up to 18 in one nest. They often nest in the margins of a cereal field, most commonly winter wheat. Grey partridge were the most abundant ground nesting bird in England. However, over the last 70 years the grey partridge population has dramatically declined by at least 80% throughout the Northern Hemisphere. Consequently, the grey partridge is on the Birds of Conservation Concern Red List, i.e. a most endangered species. So where have all my brothers and sisters gone? Well, after World War II there was a need for increased food production, so farming intensified. Hedges and unproductive corners of fields were removed to form larger fields to increase output. Consequently, there was a loss of protective cover, nesting sites and food supply. Couple that with an increase in the use of insecticide and herbicide chemicals in farming and it led to an almost catastrophic decline in insect populations and as such the loss of the normal food supply to the young chicks. In the first two weeks of their lives, the partridge chick needs to have access to a good supply of insects to enable them to develop and thrive, otherwise they may die from lack of protein. The chick's favorite insects are caterpillars, beetles, bugs, ants and aphids, which the chicks take mainly from within the crop, especially the headlands. The increased popularity of planting winter cereal, thus leaving no stubble over the winter as a source of food supply for adult birds, has put further pressure on the population. At the same time as this significant interruption to the bird's habitat and food supply, there was also an increase in the populations of generalist predators who prey upon the partridge, such as the fox, stoat, rat, weasel, carrion crow and magpie. There are also protected predators who have an impact on the partridge such as Red Kite, Buzzard, Badger, Goshawk and Sparrowhawk. And finally, at the same time, there was a marked decrease in the numbers of game and conservation managers, many of whom died fighting for their country in the two world wars. This meant that the number of managers who would carry out legitimate legal predation control on a day-to-day -day basis went from around 25,000 to around 5,000 today, so a big reduction in predation control. These are the primary reasons why we have seen the dramatic decline in partridge population. So, what can be done to help us? It is highly unlikely that we will ever see partridge numbers such as we saw up to about 50 years ago. The pressures of intensive farming will not allow the clock to be turned back to a more gentle way of farming. What improvements do you think are necessary, Peter? 
September to March we need cover with plenty of seed food, such as wild bird seed grass mixtures or supplementary feeding with seed mixes. This will keep us going through these lean months. Late winter and spring cover would help to protect us from predation. And how about you, Moira? I would like to see better nesting cover, for example grass margins next to hedgerows or beetle banks. And I definitely need an insect-rich habitat for brood rearing from April to August. Finally, I need safe cover to reduce the number of raptor strikes on my brood. Well, Moira and Peter, you will be pleased to hear that there are some passionate and committed landowners and supporters who are working hard at their own expense with knowledgeable game and conservation managers to help halt and in part reverse the decline in the great partridge population. They are having some success by making habitat improvements and carrying out legal predation control. What this demonstrates is that only with hard work and a commitment to the future of the grey partridge can a small local recovery be achieved. I hope this video has helped you to understand a little more about the grey partridge, an endangered species. So until the next time, goodbye for now.